that has called a Republican president a tyrant, a dictator, said it would be the end of the United States of America as we know it, said he would make us a laughing stock on the global stage. And those are exact quotes, actually, of what they said about Abraham Lincoln. Saw the Lincoln hat, you might have wanted me to remember that. That was Those were words that the Democrat-led media said about the first ever Republican president mm -hmm. before he was shot and assassinated in 1865. Mm. Wow. So think about that in the moment that we live in today. We came within, I mean, Lincoln actually spoke at this convention. It was at a Republican convention. It was at a state convention, in, Republican state convention, I think, in 1858, when he said a house divided cannot stand. That was on the eve of a nation that was on the brink of civil war. Right. I think we came within a hair's breadth of a second civil war in this country, and we avoided it. And I think it's because God intervened. And I believe that he has given us a chance to answer his call. And I think that's the moment we live in right now, is the hard part is we are in a kind of war in this country. But the enemy is not our fellow citizens, No, actually. It is an ideology. And so this is the work we have cut out ahead of us, is how do we win this war while still viewing our neighbors as our fellow citizens and not as our enemy combatants? Are we up to that challenge? I believe we are. What's going on, guys? So as you all, I'm sure, know, the RNC convention is well underway, okay? So J.D. Vance was announced to be Trump's VP today over Truth Social. So I made a post about this because I did not have time to make a video on that topic. And I may still do a video on that topic because I got a lot of thoughts I want to share about it. But before we get to that, I want to talk about Vivek Ramaswamy. So a lot of people really wanted Vivek to be the VP. Now, I think at this point, it was pretty obvious that it probably was not going to be Vivek for a number of reasons. Now, those reasons aren't necessarily something that I also am going to cover in this video, but I want to talk to you about what's next for Vivek, or should I say, Vivek is going to tell you what's next for Vivek. Without further ado, let me let you see what he has to say about it. We are back live from Milwaukee, joined now by former presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who is here with us on set. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. So big news of the day, obviously, yes. is the nomination of somebody who you know pretty well, yes. your former law school classmate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. Your reaction? They knew each other. That's right. I have a different dimension of knowing J.D. for a long time out of politics. We used to watch Cincinnati Bengals games back in law school in New Haven bars. We didn't even talk politics back then. But what I can say is he's a genuine person. He is somebody who actually cares about this country. He's in public service for the right reasons. We grew up not that far from each other, even in Southwest Ohio. And I can say one of the things about my relationship with him is we have dis we've agreed on most things, but even when we disagree, we push each other a little bit. And that's so missing in our American politics today is original thinkers who are energetic, who are intelligent, who care about the country. He's been one of the most successful senators, in my opinion. He's probably been our strongest fighter in the Senate. And I think he's going to make for an outstanding vice president. I truly believe that. Your name at one point had been floated on that, uh, let's call it, long list for, for sure. vice president. Um, I think even when you were running for president, you fielded that question quite a bit. I got a whether lot. you would you, Whether yeah. you would serve as VP. We now know who the pick will be. Politically, yep, from that perspective, sure. uh, there has been some talk that maybe somebody like a Marco Rubio could serve the former president better as it relates to pulling in voters who may not have otherwise gone for him. How does J.D. Vance help the ticket? I so want to say that there is that is the main concern for me with Vance is that I'm not really sure who he'll bring in that Trump wasn't already bringing in. And it's not just about Trump and Vance being white, but I feel like you want to get a lot of independent voters. And I feel like someone like DeSantis, you know, someone with a bigger brand would have helped a lot. Vance basically has almost no brand recognition. I mean, I've literally seen posts and videos saying, who is JD Vance? So he's obviously going to have it now, but I'm not sure if that was the correct decision, but again, a topic for another video. So I don't really view it necessarily that way. A lot of an, an analysis or what you say, pundits would 
check the box the on what heads, ethnicity yeah. or whatever. I think you look at it more in a bigger way that JD brings a lot of intangibles to the table. He's an American dream story. That speaks to me, but it speaks to a lot of other people like me in the country. I'm the kid of legal immigrants who came here, my parents did, with no money. I've lived the American dream. JD was born in humble circumstances. He's lived the American dream as well. His wife, Usha, somebody who's a friend of our family as well. She was also a law school classmate. I think she could be a big attribute in this campaign in reaching non-traditional voters. And even further for JD himself, he is somebody who has a unique vantage point for bringing in new voters. Here's what it is. He wasn't somebody who was a Donald Trump evangelist back in 2016. So I think that's actually- it's Quite the attribute. opposite. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I, I acknowledge that. But what I would say is he can actually reach a lot of other people who also weren't in the Donald Trump camp in 2016. Mm. And in a very personal and authentic way, he can say, look, here's why I moved. And here's why I want you to come with us as well. So you, I think that's unique. You, you're saying that you think his evolution on the former president could actually be relatable to some independents. Yes, I think it could actually be an attribute to bringing independents and even some Democrats in. A lot of working class Democrats, a lot of union members across the country. Trump is already strong with a lot of those audiences, but J.D., I think, plays even further to those strengths. And I think there's a good chance this Trump-Vance ticket could be the most formidable presidential ticket, certainly in my lifetime. And I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing them succeed at a big scale in saving the country. We'll have to see how that pans out. I mean, in general, Trump by himself is formidable. Now, in terms of Vance, I don't know, maybe y'all in the comments could let me know what y'all think about him and if y'all think that he is formidable and why. In my opinion, I don't think that what Vivek is saying sounds strong to me. It sounds like maybe he could help bring in independence, but it's like, okay, well, if it's not something very obvious, then that's one thing I can say sometimes about the left. They know that obvious things work, like identity politics works. Even on the right, they know identity politics works, but for some reason, at least with Trump, they don't want to use that. And that's okay. Don't get me wrong. It's okay to not say, hey, we're going to get black. We're going to get a woman. We're going to get LGBTQ. That's how you wind up with people like Kareem Jean-Pierre and Kamala Harris. However, you also have people like, again, Ron DeSantis. I don't know if he was even up for discussion, but I feel like considering the vitriol in the DeSantis discussion, uh, it, where he was calling him sanctimonious and DeSantis speaking ill of Trump previously, kind of unifying those two would have been kind of a nice change. And I do think that that, in my opinion, would have been stronger than the Vance Trump or the Trump Vance ticket. However, you know, obviously I support this ticket because I don't have anything against Vance. I also want to make sure that that's clear. If they do succeed in November, it would obviously open up a Senate seat in Ohio. Would you consider it? I haven't gotten that question today at all, actually. Uh, no, the reality is it's out off the press. To be frank, I would strongly consider it if I were asked to serve, but I would also want to have a serious conversation with President Trump about the other ways I could have an impact on the country. My top passion is taking on the regulatory state. I think that's a nonpartisan issue that's actually impeding our economy, in some ways even threatens the American model of self-governance. I think that administrative state is far too big. There are ways to address that from the executive branch. There are also things that need to be done from Congress and the Senate too. So I look forward to those conversations after President Trump is successfully reelected re with J.D. Bice. I'll ask because I've got to check the box. Has okay. anybody reached out to you from Governor DeWine's office to broach this issue yet? I have not discussed this with Governor DeWine. Anybody from his office? I, I haven't discussed it with President DeWine. I haven't d discussed it with Governor DeWine, but you know, I look forward to I look forward to evaluating what the future holds in store. I would strongly consider it if asked, but I think there are a lot of other ways to serve this country, and you know, this isn't about what comes after victory. This is about what our path is to victory in November. To that point, and then I'll, I'll move on, but I want to ask you, talk about the ways that you think you can serve former President Trump. Chief of Staff in the White House, is that something that has been uh, brought up to you as a possible role? We've talked about a lot of different possibilities Who's from the waiting? cabinet. President Trump and I have had, I mean, we talk regularly. I spoke to him, actually most recently, it was after midnight on the night that he suffered that injury, that tragedy, and the assassination attempt on Saturday night. One of the things I admire about him is he's always strong, he's always energetic, and I think we get along and we want to save the country together, but that's going to come in a lot of different forms. So we've talked about different ideas potentially in a cabinet to other ways of driving change. And, you know, today I think adds one more development that'll give us a lot to consider. Well, there you have it, guys. So Vivek is looking to potentially join Trump's cabinet. They mentioned chief of staff. They also mentioned Congress. I mean, in my opinion, 
I mean, sure, you want good people in Congress. Obviously, you got to have somebody to combat these radical leftists. But we all know that in Congress, they really, in this day and age, hardly ever get anything done. I really think he would be much better served, probably somewhere on Trump's cabinet, positioning himself to be the next president someday. But let's not forget that we're also talking about in 2028, you got a lot of strong contenders because Ron DeSantis is obviously returning. Nikki Haley's probably going to come back. Tim Scott's probably going to run again. Fat, sloppy Chris Christie might run again. Vivek's probably, of course, the topic of discussion here is probably going to run it himself. J.D. Vance might run for president, and he's going to be in a much better position having been VP. You might get uh, this loser, Mike Pence, to try it again, even though it was a dumb idea for him to ever try again in the first place. Byron Donalds. I really think that this is going to be tough, not to mention uh, when Trump first had started, he kind of just came out of nowhere and beat the hell out of all of these different senators and governors and everything. So you might have some wild card jump in, just like how Vivek jumped in, just like how Trump jumped in. You might have somebody just come from anywhere out of nowhere. You might have a freaking content creator or something jump in. And who knows if they're good enough, they could one up all of these people. So we got an interesting future ahead, guys. Now, I agree with Vivek. We definitely have to win this election. Otherwise, this might be a moot point, especially with all these illegal immigrants in the country and how the Democrats love to try to fast track them to toward citizenship so they can vote in elections and basically destroy the ability for conservative Republicans to ever win elections. So this time we got to win this election. But it's a curious and interesting conversation about the future of America. I do think that Vivek probably if he keeps trying, will be able to become a president of the United States one day. But in terms of how soon that may be when you got DeSantis out here kicking butt hard in Florida, when you got people that are smooth like Byron Donalds, not to mention a bunch of other wild cards and a bunch of weirdos who like Nikki Haley. I mean, the competition out here is real. But let me know what you guys think. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I appreciate y'all watching the Black Anomaly Rising channel. I'm out. I personally believe that God intervened today, not just on behalf of President Trump, but on behalf of our country. This is unacceptable in the United States of America. This is not who we are, disagree or not. We settle our differences peacefully through free speech and open debate, not this way. And so if one silver lining comes out of tonight, let it be that. And I hope that we begin the process of healing as a country while avoiding what could have been a national disaster that really without exaggeration could spell the end of the United States as we know it had this gone a different direction.